Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 23 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to model a computer mouse in the sculpt environment. We'll take a look at how to use the symmetry feature, how to insert a new edge, and how to use the crease command to create a flat surface. To get started, I'm going to insert a reference image into the canvas. If you're sculpting a shape off an already existing object, then this can be super helpful in getting the shape started. I've also found that even if you're creating a new product from scratch, that a rough reference sketch can be very helpful when using the sculpting mode. I'll select Attached Canvas from the Insert drop-down menu or by selecting it in the toolbar. I'll select the right plane, and then I'll select the image from my desktop. I'm just going to drag the outer slider and scale it up for now, and we'll calibrate the size in just a bit, so I'll click OK. Let's go ahead and calibrate the size of the reference image so the sculpted form will naturally follow the realistic dimensions. I'll toggle open the canvases folder and then right click on the computer mouse image and select Calibrate. Then, you'll see that I can select the first point on the canvas, so I'll just click where the front tip of the mouse is, and then I'll need to define the second point, and I'll click at the furthest point of the back part of the mouse. Now, after I add the second point, I can type out a dimension. So I'll type out 114 millimeters and click Enter and you'll see that the reference image will immediately resize to those dimensions. Now the last thing that I'll do is right click on the reference image and I'll select Edit Canvas. And I'm going to move the image up about 20 millimeters or so, or until the bottom of the mouse is lined up with the bottom plane because I'm going to start to sculpt from this bottom plane. And before I go any further, I'll click the save icon and I'll save this as computer mouse. Now let's get started with sculpting the mouse. You can really start with a number of different shapes in the sculpt workspace, but I find it easiest to always start with the pre-made shape that's closest to your final shape. So in this case, the mouse is really just a rounded box. So I'm going to select box from the toolbar. Then I'll select the bottom plane I'll click on the center origin and I'll drag out with my mouse. Now I'll go ahead and type the overall dimensions of the mouse, which are 114 millimeters long. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place and then 62 millimeters for the width, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then you'll notice the box feature immediately prompts us for the height. So I'm going to look at this mouse from the right view and you'll notice that the horizontal line of the box lines up well with this horizontal plane of the mouse, or this imaginary plane if I were to cut the mouse through its side where I could get the largest flat surface here. So I'm just going to click OK, and you'll see that we have a basic shape approximately the same size as the mouse, but not quite as tall. Now a few more quick tips before we reshape this box. First off, let's turn off the origin planes by selecting the light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. Now I found that any time you're working in the sculpt environment, you'll want to turn off any other objects that can get in the way, as it can get pretty confusing when you're trying to push and pull on different faces. Also, you'll notice that the box shape we've created automatically has a transparent appearance because of the reference image splitting it down the middle. If I toggle the reference image on and off, you'll see that the box is turned to 100% opacity. And sometimes I find it helpful to turn down the opacity of the sculpted form so it's easier to see the details on the reference image. If you want to turn the opacity down, simply right click on the body in the Fusion 360 browser and change the opacity under the opacity control. But for the sake of this video and making it easier for you guys to see, I'll go ahead and leave it at 100%. The last thing here, you'll want to make sure that you have your visual style and the display settings set to shaded with visual edges only. 
as this will ensure that you can see all of the faces that you're able to work with in the sculpt environment. You definitely don't want your visual style set to shaded. The first thing I'm going to do is set up symmetry so we can shape one side of the mouse and the other side will automatically be mirrored. To do this, I'll select the mirror option from the symmetry dropdown list. Then we'll have to select two faces. So I'll select one face and you'll see it labeled it number one. Now the second face we select is going to determine the mirror or symmetry line. So we want this mouse to be symmetrical right down the middle. So I'm going to select the face directly across from the first face. Then you'll notice that this green symmetry line now appears. And that is in fact the symmetry line that we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice that any faces that I select are automatically selected on the other side of the symmetry line. So this is a nice way to save time, be a little bit more efficient, and of course to ensure that you do have a symmetrical shape in the sculpt environment, especially if that's what you're trying to achieve. At this point, I'll want to create this rounded hump of the mouse. I'm going to select the back top face of the form, right click and select edit form, and then I'm going to look at it from the right view. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, and I can't stress this enough, is that you really have to get into the habit of looking at your sculpted forms from different sides of the view queue. Now, this will make it easier to ensure you're selecting the right controls. As you'll see that if I look at it from a perspective, then I have way too many selection options here, and it's easy to accidentally select the wrong one. So again, looking at it from the right view, I'm going to select this rounded rectangle, which allows us to move faces in a planar direction. Or in this case, we're adjusting the faces along this right YZ plane. So you'll notice as I click and hold with my mouse, I can drag this around, and I'm just going to pull up to the left a bit, and you'll see that we're already starting to follow the mouse shape. I can also select the face just to the left of this one without leaving the edit form feature, and I can move that around until it's a little bit better. Now, if you're new to the sculpt environment, you'll find that it's a lot more experimentation than parametric modeling. So you'll want to get into the habit of experimenting, and if you don't like something, simply hit Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows to undo the most recent action. I'm going to look at this from the home view to give you another idea of why we created this center line of symmetry before we got started with sculpting. So you'll see that it's a bit easier and we're able to focus on the shape without having to worry about this other side. Now at this point, I'm liking the overall shape of the computer mouse, but I want to reshape the front of the mouse so it has more of a sharp angle here. If I right click and select edit form on the front face, You'll notice that no matter what I do, I'm really not going to get the amount of control that I need. So what I would do in this scenario is add another edge or two, giving me more faces to control the object. I'm going to double click on the center line of the mouse because double clicking will select the entire line. And then I'm going to select insert edge from the modify dropdown list. I'm just going to use the slider to position the line so it's above the center line, and I'll click OK. Now you'll notice that right after I clicked OK, it readjusted the shape a bit and essentially cut these front faces up into smaller faces. Now I can go ahead and edit form on this top shape and adjust the face by dragging the center manipulator around because this icon represents universal scaling. So you'll see that we can adjust this to better represent this front shape of the mouse. Alrighty, so now I want to get the bottom to be a bit more square, like this computer mouse reference image. So I'm first just going to use the planar square to move the faces down a bit further. And I'll do this for the front bottom face and the back bottom face. Now, I would probably spend a little bit more time to tweak this side profile even further, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it at what it is, 
And let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the mouse. Now to make this mouse a bit more ergonomic, I'm going to add a groove to the side for the thumb. Now looking at the top of the mouse, I'm going to select this top left edge and right click and select edit form. And I'm going to select the planar direction icon and drag it out just a bit. So you'll see that looking at it from the back, we're already starting to get a nice indent. I can also select the points where all the edges meet in the middle. And I can use the dimensions to control it a bit more. I'll type in four millimeters and it looks like the top moved a bit. So I'm just going to go back and forth here and move each one around until I'm happy with the overall shape. And I'm starting to like this overall shape, so I'm going to click OK. Now we want to make sure that the computer mouse has a flat bottom so it will slide on the desk properly. So holding down the Shift key, I'm going to select all the bottom faces, and then I'm going to right click and select Crease. Now you may have noticed that the edges are creased, but the bottom isn't flat yet. So holding down the Shift key, I'll select the two faces again. And this time, I'll select the Flatten command from the Modify drop-down list. And now you'll see the shape is completely flat on the bottom. Now, at this point, if you want to make the mouse specifically for a left or right hand, you could turn the symmetry off and edit the form on just one side. So to turn the symmetry off, simply go up to the Symmetry drop-down list, select Clear Symmetry, Select the model and then click OK. I'm also going to show you another way to do this. So I'm going to hit Command Z. And if I select the symmetry line first, and then if I select clear symmetry, you'll see that it not only saves an extra step of having to use that dialog box, but this will also help me control a specific symmetry line if I did happen to have multiple symmetry lines set up in the first place. At this point, I can right click on the top edge and click edit form. And I can drag this out a bit more to make this a right handed mouse. And maybe I'll just push the back in a bit more. So this is where the sculpt workspace can be really fun and you can really play around with the shapes and ideas that would take you way too long to create in the model workspace. Now, obviously, I did this mouse concept fairly fast. So remember that one of the most important tips is that the more faces and edges you have, the more control you have over that area of the model. If I'm happy with this overall shape, I'll go ahead and click OK. And I will click Finish Form in the toolbar so I can go back to the model workspace. Now I can go ahead and take this model a step further by using the model tools to really define the features of the computer mouse, including adding a center scroll here, maybe splitting the keys down the middle. And I can go ahead and hit the keyboard shortcut letter F for fillet, select the bottom edge, and I'll enter a fillet radius of four millimeters and click OK. So that's all I'm really going to show for this tutorial because again, like I mentioned in day number 22, you really need to get used to these basic sculpt commands before we go ahead and take it a step further. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.